Good morning and welcome to our kitchen table. Before we get started and tell you what we're actually doing here, I just want to apologise for the sound level. We haven't got an external microphone that's going to reach all the way across, so we're going to have to shout. Project, darling, project. Exactly. It will get better because we're going to move the camera to close in onto the table. So luckily you won't have to um, be looking at our two faces all the way through. So just as a bit of an intro, I'll explain what it is that we're doing today. So we're going to be creating uh, Ian's first proper junk journal. Yeah, I've never made one before. No, so we have an old book. This just happens to be um, the autobiography of Sharon Osborne. Nothing against Sharon. Obviously not. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to gut this and then we're going to recreate a junk journal using um, some of the paraphernalia that you see on the table here. So there's absolutely everything, old, proper, In old papers. Forms, 1908. Yeah, we don't need to go into no. what's on the table, but there's a complete eclectic mix of old and vintage papers, genuine old and vintage papers, not reproductions and not ones that have been printed out or scanned and they're actually all real. Um, but to include in that, we've got some kind of overstock, like pockets and that kind of stuff that we created for other projects but never actually used. Created too many. Tags and yeah, envelopes. And, and, and that kind of thing. So I've got some pockets here with some Tim Holtz paper dolls on. There's all sorts of different things. And we're going to combine a lot of this and create a kind of eclectica junk journal, if that makes sense. I think it does, yeah. Right, so let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing to do is to gut the book. So that means to take the text block, that's your paper block part, away from the hard case. Right. Or your hard covers. Yeah. Right, and to do that, all you do is just pull back both of the leaves, or the uh, covers. Yeah, both of your covers need more coffee and then that's just going to show you where it's just connected just down that edge there so using a sharp knife just very very careful that's it just run down okay and that should just you've not got all the way through mm, be too careful. Go, yeah, just be careful because you might cut through you might cut through the actual spine itself make sure you get oh, just okay. in that gap between that's it Ah, uh, yeah. That's easy. That's the one, yeah. So, turn it round and then do that again. Do it very, very carefully. It's quite gung ho this morning. Yes, I am. Okay, and then put the text block to one side and that can be and used to just trim that off. Right, so while you're doing that quietly, while I'm talking, <laughs> so that text block can then be put to use for other projects later on. Obviously once you've removed all the photographs and stuff. Right, so what are you doing now? I'm just cleaning that up. Right, so you're just removing the excess paper and just tidying up yeah. the spine area. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Bentley's come for a little water. Hello. You can hear your pig pat feet. There we are. Okay, so there's your floppy cover now. Okay, so next thing then, have you got a measuring stick? No. Well, what's that in front of you? It's uh, inches, I don't do inches. <laughs> I have to go upstairs and get one. Right, okay, well let's pop it on hold for a second then. I have a proper ruler now. <laughs> when you say proper, you mean a metric ruler. Well, that has millimetres on it, not inches. Yes, okay. Right, okay, so, so obviously this is going to depend on what book that you're gutting, whichever one, if you're following this at home, want to try this at home, you just measure the width of your spine. So do it between, yeah, yeah? so you want between the two covers. That was 32 millimetres. Right, so if we say 30 millimetres. 30 millimetres is going to be good, yeah. Right, so that's going to be fine then, so you've got your width to be 30 millimetres. I'll just write that down. There you go, you've got a full book text block to work on there. <laughs> 30 millimetre spine. Okay, so we're going to be doing this in a different way to a lot of people because a lot of people would reinforce the spine first with fabric or mm -hmm. with paper or whatever and then punch through 
and then stitch their signatures directly through the spine. Got you. We ain't doing that. We're doing it our way, which means we're going to create that little tray first mm -hmm. to go in the spine, we'll stitch in and then we'll glue into the spine. But we still need to reinforce the inner spine first with either paper or with fabric. Okay, no problem. We've got some um, buckram. We could use that or we could just use ordinary cloth, depending on what we've got. Yeah. So, to that end, mm -hmm. okay, we'll pop you on hold for a second and then we'll go and see what we've got to be able to use to reinforce. Okay, so Ian's created his card tray that's got the dots on for pricking. So it's like a pricking guide that you've already printed on, just onto card. Yeah. You're going to reinforce these edges now with um, Gorilla Tape. Yeah. So that, obviously this is going to be open and closed quite a lot, so they will need reinforcing as well, before we reinforce the spine. So that's what you're, Ian's doing now. It's called Gorilla Tape because, ooh, 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 it's sticky. <laughs> Wouldn't that be monkey tape? Possibly. <laughs> I'm just going to pull it this way a little bit so I can see. I don't want to cover the lines up, the dots up that Mike's going to stitch through. Yeah, if you just go up to the first um, stitch hole, that's then going to cover. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. So that's going to reinforce. This is one of those uh, very, very sticky fabric tapes, um, like duct tape, yeah. but very, very strong. You won't rip it? No. There we are. And then you just need to trim off, off the excess. I do. See, I can use a ruler with the inches on for this. Yes. <laughs> well, it's just a straight edge then, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want to give me those I've bits? Got you got a rubbish bag there? Yeah. That makes a change. Usually you give me the rubbish. If you'll pardon the expression. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so do you want to put that to one side for now? Just make sure, let me commit the crease. <laughs> oh, there's murder. There we are. <laughs> okay, so we'll put that to one side and then yeah. we'll bring back the, um, the main spine, or the main book if you like. Okay, so now, is there a top and a bottom? It doesn't really make any difference. No. We need to reinforce the spine. So do you want to explain how you're going to do that? Yeah, I've got some buckram, which is self-adhesive, which is a uh, book binding cloth. Yes. And I've put some double-sided adhesive on the back. Yeah. So I'm going to make it so it's 60 wide. So it just goes over the white areas on the page. So yeah. we'll completely cover the inside of the spine, but just go over 60 by, was it 210? The same well, size. We set up the same size as the white. Why do we want to it? cover that, don't we? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 60 by 231. Right, so that's like seven, just over seven inches. Right, just move that out of the way then, please. Okay. 60 by 231. Mr. Bentley's bedding down. So, 60. We've brought Mr. Bentley's bed down and we'll put it near the radiator. And he's just circling inside his bed now, just making his, his making quilt sure, He's making sure there are no snakes. <laughs> that off. You can hear the texture on the, yeah. the cloth. Okay, so we'll put that piece away and for another day. Two, three, one. One, two. Double check please. I think I said two, three, one. Measure twice, cut once. Two, three, yeah. two, two, three, one, two, thirty will do it. Two, two, three, two. Okay. 232 and 230. I just noticed there's a kink in that ruler. <laughs> it's been used for something. For yeah, you've, cut, something you've, cut, you've cut along it. <laughs> it's very wobbly. And I'll just trim that to size. There we go. Okay. okay. Right, so if you were using ordinary cotton fabric then you could just put your layer of PVA glue or school glue down on that and then lay your fabric down over the top then go over it again with another piece uh, with more glue just so that it sets in but using buckram 
You don't have to do that. Especially when you put self adhesive on the back. Well, we've got our very strong self adhesive tape. Well, this is not the extra, this is not the really really strong but stuff. But it doesn't really need to be the really really strong stuff. Okay. Or should we put some extra strong on there just no, in case? It's fine. Honestly. Just make sure it's in the middle. Right, so. Right, so from the inside. Push down in the middle. Yes, and then work your way out. That's it. And then if you've got a bone folder or something like that, that's it. And then just very gently guide it into place. Just turn it round. Looks very neat and tidy when you do it this way. Which is what we want. Well, yeah. Just got a bit of a <laughs> thread. My mother said, never pull on a loose thread. Only because she had legs fell off. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, not going to go anywhere. anywhere now that looks really, really nice. Now, just, just use my ruler. Just make sh double make sure getting all the air bubbles out. And the ruler is just the right width. The right width. Yeah. That's so what I like about this size book. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, if you want to decorate the inside, you could just use the paper up to. Book but we're going to use some fabric on the outside, aren't we? We are using fabric on the outside, yeah. So should we have a look through? Okay, so we'll put this to one side then. Yeah. And then we'll have a look in Mike's collection of fabric for something appropriate. So we'll have a search through and then we'll join you when we've made our choice. Yeah. Okay, so Ian's made his choice. And it's this piece of fabric here, and it just so happens <laughs> it's, eclectic, it's actually eclectic a, elements from Tim Holtz. Yes, uh, which is wa wallflower. So eclectic elements fabric from the Tim Holtz. That's lovely. And we've got plenty of this to do a front yeah, cover. Side. So that's what we'll do. So we'll get rid of that box. Right, and I'll now, I'll now go and cover this in the really sticky, sticky. Well, we only need to do a piece which is about an inch or half an inch um, larger than the actual cover itself, don't we? Yes, that's true. Okay, so are you going to go away and cut that? Do you think we'll get that? We'll have to do the inside panels in the same. Might just manage it. Mm, possibly. I'll have to be crafty then, won't I? Very, 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 very crafty. Okay, let's get cut in. So we'll cut that down to the right size. Yeah. And then we're going to cover it in the very, very sticky, double-sided yeah. sticky tape. We are. Lovely. Back in a moment. So we've just moved the camera over to our, um, what would you call it, peninsula unit? Oh, it sounds Worked, It does, doesn't it? Uh, worktop. Yeah. So that Ian can show you how he's going to put the cloth cover onto the outer of the old Sharon Osborne book. So yeah. take it away, Ian. So we've trimmed it about, so about, about an inch, isn't it? Under an inch, all the way yeah. around, which yeah. is a bit bigger. We've put the sticky on the back. This is the sticky that takes your fingerprints off. <laughs> this is the industrial grade um, sign writers adhesive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. From my friend Andy. Oh yeah. It's very, very sticky. It is incredibly sticky. Put that to one side. Okay, so we've got the material. So have you worked out which way is which way is up and which well, way is down? It doesn't matter because I just turn the book around, can't I? Doesn't matter at the moment. It can be either way. Okay. I would have thought it would be anyway. So we carefully selected which part of the fabric we wanted on the front cover. Yes, we have, but but that's not the front and that's not the back until we stick the. Go ahead. So. So I've got one chance at this, and because it will grab straight away. <laughs> And just down like that. And just turn it over. That's it. And then just gently, gently ease it in. Again, if you were doing this with your own fabric at home and if you don't have that double sided sheet, then PVA works yeah. just as well. It we're does. just doing this for speed and ease. Okay, so we've got. 
it on there. Okay, so we just need to mitre the corners we now. Do. We're not we're not overly bothered if the corners don't go too close to the edge. If you can make sure you leave two or three millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That way it gives you fabric to fold under. That'll just give it so it doesn't use a similar sort of a... But we're putting corners on so if we do happen to do it too much... Well, if, you, if you miss a little bit. Miss a little bit, yeah. So we're just going to rush. So that one's just turned over there. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other two to do. I always do the short sides easy. <laughs> Get those out of the way. We did try some um, Perspex templates for doing this, didn't we? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the self adhesive. It's so strong, it snapped them. Well, it snapped yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I tried to get them off. And just into that. So now we've got the two long sides done. Mm -hmm. And we're just left with the, the, the two short sides done, rather. Yep. Yeah, you see? That's the front. Look, the other. Yeah, you're not really in shot. Am I not? I'm sorry. No, Am I down, in shot? But that's better. Sorry. <laughs> so, what I'll do now, I'm just going to gently persuade it over. Are you going to just oh, sorry. push corners? Yeah, I need to push my corners in. That's it. One, down, that, 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 that. You could actually just use the, um, the part of the pen nib. Okay. The cap. Cap, yeah. Just push it in, push them in. That's it. As I say, we're putting corners on so it will cover anything up that sticks out. Make sure they're down. And then gently persuade it over. I try to just do it gently. Mm. Well, there's no point because you end up stretching the fabric otherwise. Yeah, you do. If you do it too tight, and then you'll end up with a, um, a cover that wants to bow. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you can always sure. burnish it a little yeah. later on. Yep, yeah. just going to burnish this now to keep it down. Work my way around. And that one as well. And last but not least, the bottom edge. And just pull it over. There you go. Keep it tight so it doesn't go back at the edge. Mm. But not so tight that it causes a bit of no, pain. No, not so tight. It's one of those things that comes with practice. The more you do, the easier it gets. So, there is the book cover now. And with any luck, you won't be able to see the Charnels born through the spine. No, you can. There you go. Job That's where you've got to bear in mind if you use white material. Yes. You may run that, make that <laughs> risk. But there are ways around that. Okay, so that's the cover covered. Yes. Okay, so this is the spare material from around the edge. As you can see. I'm going to use this for the inside front and inside back. What do you reckon, Mike? Yes, so basically this space here now, which is on the inside front and back covers, Ian wants to also put panels of the same fabric in. So he's cut a piece of card which is the appropriate size to cover quite nicely and hide these kind of like corners. Um, and he's going to trace that out now onto the remaining fabric and cut those two panels out. But if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's just going to fray, the adhesive on the back will stop it from fraying. Yeah, it gives you, it gives you a really sort of strong edge to work to. It does. Apart from taking your fingerprints off. <laughs> See how strong it is. Because it's grabbing an auto hold of the uh, ruler, isn't it? Yeah. If you perchance get it stuck to anything plastic, forget about it, just throw it away. <laughs> You'll not get it off. It is quite grabby. Next one. Is there a, just a quick edge to take off that one? There is. Yeah. 
I mean, you don't have to use fabric for this. If you want to just use uh, patterned card or even plain coloured card to go on the inside, it would work just as well. You could even use marble papers if you wanted to. That'd be nice. Yes, but we've got this. You've decided that that's what you want to do. Well, we've got it, so we might as well use it. Yeah. Trace off. I'm not drawing all the way around, I'm just drawing the corners yeah. on. That's easy that way, isn't it? Yeah, and you don't get ink all over the, uh, the material. <laughs> right, so we've done that one, so we haven't stuck it down yet, so we'll come back when we're ready to do. I'll stick them both down, yeah? Yep, yeah. cool. Right, I've got my inserts for my front, inside front, and inside backs done, all cut out ready. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the tape off. Oh, the sticky off rather, not the tape. <laughs> Did you get permission from an adult to use, a knife. <laughs> to use sharp implements? Sharp implements, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to need your help, Mike. Are you? And, you the and I'm going to have to lean over the table. You are, I'm afraid, because it's, it's gone all wibbly wobbly. <laughs> right. Okay. So, towards me. To me? Are, to we, you? are we at the top there? Uh, I'll push it down, but not touch. Ah, that looks perfect, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Down. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. That. Would you pass me some corners, please, as well? So, right. Okay. Uh, are they in the tin? Uh, no, they're in the top tray. So the big ones? Yes, please. The medium sized ones? The big ones, please. I think the big ones. This calls for the big ones. I'll bring both over so you can okay, see. Okay, so we'll just do this first. Move those out of shot. Where's the, um, the, the frame clamp? Upstairs. Right. In the bookcase. Can you just help me with this first? That's fine. There we go. Hello, Mr. Bentley Bubbles. Okay, the next one. You just woke up. Ah. Oh. Don't tell the top see again. See which ones we want. Do you think it should go that way? Or that way? Which do you prefer, Mike? Uh, don't mind. Either do way. We do that way then. Oh, hang on, what's that? No, do it the other way around. That way around? Yeah, do it that way. Can you call that then? Got it? Yep. It's like a big piece of uh, band aid. <laughs> it's the right colour. Are you happy with that? Yes, I think so. Okay, I'll just. Yeah, perfect. Is it? It's very forgiving. It is actually because you can just... And with it being fabric, with it being actual cloth, it's very, very tactile, isn't it? Plays with that. So yeah, we've got two sorts of two sorts of corners. One, one big, one medium. I think they're too small, they're going to be too thin. So I think we'll put on... Some big hefty ones. Some big lovely ones. Uh, no, I meant the other ones. These are three different sorts, Mike. Oh, is there? Yes. Right, and hang the on top then. of the tray. Just run to the west wing. Top tray. The Chinese corner ones. Yeah. They're the ones. Ah, okay. There we are. I mean, these are lovely. I don't know whether I want to put them on here or not. Let's have a look. Should we <laughs> audition them? Yes, that's a good idea. Have a look. That's, that would fit on there. Hmm, quite like those. What about the other ones? Let's have a look. Which do we prefer? Which do you prefer, Mike? The copper ones or the brass ones? Those ones. Those ones? Yes. Okay, that was easy then. Okay, ducks. So before you do that, don't you go and get the clamps? And I, uh, yes, please. Okay, be right back. Okay, we're back. I've got the clamp. We've, had a man <laughs> we've made a managerial decision. We're going to use <laughs> these ones because those ones don't clamp tight enough. Okay, right. Well, we'll explain what the clamp is in a moment. Okay. This was the clamp was. Um, a Christmas present from Dad, but I'll explain that in some, a minute. Some glossy accents in there just to hold them in. Mm -hmm. Push it in with your hands. Which we can't see because your hands are in the so way. That's push it. Push those down. That's what was these. They're called it's canvas a, the, pliers. They take, yeah, canvas clamps. So what you do, put them in there. Can you see? Yep. Push hard. Squeeze. And it's because they've got like a, an acrylic pad on the inside of the clamp. They don't damage. But also you get even pressure because when you do them by hand, you're doing this and pushing. Yeah. And when you push them in, 
the, the very very soft yes absolutely so when when i opened the box from dad at christmas with these in i looked at them and thought what the, the hell, hell are these, are these? And it wasn't until later on when Dad explained we were watching, um, I think it was the repair shop. We were. And Susie, the leather lady on the repair shop, used a pair to crimp on um, a brass frame on an old handbag. And at that time I said, oh, now they'd be useful for putting corners on books. Never thought any more of it. And then about five months later, Christmas comes and Dad's bought us a set. Yeah. Which I thought was really, really nice. True. Very thoughtful. And last two now. It's a miracle I remembered. <laughs> Unless he bought them there and then and just kept them back to one, you know. Which he could have done. Yeah, could have done. Knowing Dad. So that goes in there. And then just bend them over. And then squeeze. Three. And number four. It's a bit sad looking this bottle isn't it? It's nearly empty. Well now I've cut the top off because it kept getting blocked up. Alright, oh, <laughs> rather than poke it out with a needle. It eventually wouldn't poke out with a needle. Yeah. Right. tried that, okay. It's my glossy accents anyway, not yours. So. Is that we always saying I'll do it my way? No, no, no. Shall we burst into song Mr Bentley? Uh, Shall we? Shall we burst into song? Look at that face. <laughs> There we go. And now we've got all four corners on. And that's the front, obviously, because we've got the excellent stuff. So we're now ready to start making or creating the signatures, I think, aren't we, Mike? I think so. Let me just move the camera back around. Do you want to just show them the, the corners again? Just in case they didn't. Let me just move the camera so I can actually see it. There we go. Lovely. And, and back. On the, and that's on the inside. And the back. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so now to start sorting out the signatures. This is the fun part, I think. <laughs> right. Be right back. Okay, so we've got the tray. As you've seen earlier, we use that uh, really thick tape on it. Gorilla tape. Gorilla tape. We need to put something down there to strengthen it. So when you stitch into it, it's going to pull straight through the card. Yes. When people handle it. Yes. So we're going to use the book cloth again. So the same stuff we use to reinforce the spine. Yeah. Got a lovely yeah. texture. So it up. Hello Bentley. <laughs> so it wants to be just a little bit shorter than, I mean it's 30 mils so we'll make it 28. Mm -hmm. We have a, a millimetre on each side. Yes. Ow! Ow! You're getting poured. I'm, I'm getting poured. What? So we're going to make this 28. One and two. Oh God, he's gone to go find Teddy. You may hear some squeaking in a minute. That's Bentley. He's found who. Oh, there you go. located Teddy. <laughs> Never want to miss out. Making his presence heard. To, to his adoring public. Absolutely. Okay, so that indicates the top of the tray. I can't see that. Sorry. Can you go? Thank you. Sorry. That indicates the top of the tray, a little arrow. Yeah. So, just have to pop that into there. That should just lay between the creases. Just nicely. Yeah, you want to make sure it doesn't touch the sides. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Ian just looked at me really disgusted. <laughs> So then we just put that into there. You see, when I shut it now, it's not going to trap. Yeah. So Do you want to just put, you to lower it down a little bit so we can see it again because yeah. you went a bit off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lovely. So then when you fold, if you from the end, you're not going to trap it into the. Into the what? The into the fold. Right. So what I'm going to do, I think, as well, I'm just going to trim it up. I I, I, I'm not very good with inches, so I count the uh, notches on the ruler. Right. So I'm just going to fold that, and I'm going to count three there, there. And I'm going to fold it in on itself so it decorates the top of the... Oh, them. okay. That's not, so, like, not something we've done before. No, I thought I just thought of it then. Okay. Let's move the, the mark, and all I'll do is just push that there. 
a little frame it there. Well, it's going to get glued down anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's true. And you, one. you won't see it. And so if you'd like to a built-in header. Oh, okay. Yeah, rather than using the head tape. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so we're just going to decide what we're going to do okay, with... so can you just show that again? Just hold it down so we can see it. No, you're too high up. That's it. A bit further down. There we go. That's it. can see it now. Sorry. Lovely stuff. And then all we need to do now is decide what we're going to cover it with. And we can then move on to... Oh, we can actually move on to do the signatures, can't we? Well, let's do the cover of the, 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 the tray first. Yeah, okie dokie. All right, so be right back. Right, I've cut a piece of 12x12 Tim Holtz paper into strips and put the dreaded sticky tape on the back. <laughs> and these are going to go onto the flaps of the tray. I've made them a lot longer so I've made life easy for myself. Okay. So, you'll stick them on, but you mustn't stick them right up to the edge. So you've got to give it some, so it can bend into it, as you see. Uh -huh. So that's one. And it doesn't matter if they're upside down or whatever because it's just writing and they're all over oh, yeah, the place. Yeah. But you've just got to say, you've got to be incredibly careful when you stick, stick them down because the, this tape... I mean, you, you can use wet glue Oh yeah. or dry glue depending on what, what you want to do. Uh, <laughs> oh, you see what I mean? Yeah. So you see when it's closed... It's all nice and tidy, you've mm, done a straight line Absolutely. Then. And on the other side, you can do the same again. See, it's so strong, it's even pulled out the cutting mouth. <laughs> Are you going to trim that first before sticking the next piece no, on? No, I'm not. Because you end up in a mess if you do. Okay. And I'll split, explain why. Just bring it a bit sticky off the back. I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? No. What I learned as well is never trim the tray width before you put these on. Right, okay. Because if you trim the tray width before you get these on, you don't know where the end of the tray is. Ah, the horizontal. You end up cutting at an angle. <laughs> Clever. So there's a little ridge just on the, the edge. And I'll just put that on the ridge. And theoretically, when I fold that, it should just be a very, very small bit of black showing. Right. Which there is, if you can see. Just a tad. Just a tad. Uh, I'd have to zoom in a little bit. Okay, on that's that. fine. With it. So that's on there, and then the last piece goes on there. Again, just so it just quite touches the black. And also it makes the tray a lot more rigid. But it does, makes it certainly more substantial. So what I'll do now is I'll just trim this off the tray. By doing it once, you only can only possibly get it right. Because if you cut it more and more times you cut it, the more times it's going to go... Yeah. I'm only not in, in view, sorry. No, you keep moving from one side to the other. I'm matter. sorry. On, carry on. So sorry. <laughs> Remember not to cut right across because we've already put the header in there. Yeah. And we'll cut the header off. From the header out. That's one. And wind it up to its net. And two. And then just flip it and do the other side. Yeah. Flip it over and do the other side. So if you're using wet glue at home, let it dry first. Yes. Before you start trying to cut it, or you'll end up with a, a mangled mess. Uh, also peel. Yes, it will, won't it? It curl up. And that one. And there. And then, of course, if you've got any raw white edges that you want to get rid of, you just go over the edges with some distressing to get rid. So then, just going to make this the right width. Cut the paper to three inches, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to cut the flaps just slightly less than three inches. Okay. And then you've got a perfect edge to work to. 
as Mike says, yeah, if you want to use distress ink, distress the edges, you've then got your little tray. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the other one? Yeah. So see the full thing? Of course. And then just a little bit before the three. I'm not sure what that little bit is before the three. Half, three quarters, an eight sixteenth, something like that. Could be. Two sixteenths, one sixteenth. Yeah, one, two, three. And you've now got. Just hold it, bring it down a little bit, please. There you go. Now I've got your tray. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll be right back for the next stage. Okay, so we're at that stage now. So we've done and finished um, with the tray. All I have to do now, so those are the marks on the tray that Ian put on when he printed it, the paper. Those are the pricking holes for stitching. Yeah, right. Yep. So all I have to, I've just got a pricking mat here. It's just a foam pricking mat and a brad hole. And all I'm going to do is just prick through where those marks are, make it easy for yourself. This is why we pre-print them, so we know they're in the exact right place, the right space in a part, and everything. So now if I show you the other side of the book room, you can see where the holes are. Makes it a lot easier when it comes to stitching. Okay, so the next job is Ian's gone ahead and chosen all the pages for the junk journal. So in here you've got ledger paper, there's graph paper, there's old maps, there's um, old advertisement sheets, there's some sheets from previous books that he's done and journals that he's created and there's a nice selection and mix of different papers. I'm not going to flick through them all until they're stitched because these are in the right place. Um, old gazetteer pages, um, a nice eclectic mix of junk journal pages. Some with grid spaces on that you can write on, some that are all covered but you can gesso over the top and write on or paint or draw or do whatever and there are some plain pages for writing and journaling on too. So there's three signatures. There is, yeah. And there's what, 15? I think there's 15 sheets 15 in each. sheets in each. I'll know so in that, a minute when we've got it all. So that gives you 60 pages per signature. So, so there's going to be about 180. about 180 pages when this journal's all done. Okay, so the next thing to do is to, um, to prick through these pages in readiness for stitching. Okay, so this is the journal block. So this is all the pages. I've put two large paper clips on just to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to just fold it to create a kind of cradle with my fingers. So you may remember we did two sets of the pricking guide, one on paper and one on card. The one on card was used for the tray. This paper version is used for the guard or the guide for pricking where the holes are going to go in the signatures. So all I have to do now is just to push that down to the bottom and then I can prick through pretty much all the way through using that guide. There we go. With them being all different sizes, they wonder if you don't clip them. Hey, don't I know, they? I know. So we're all the way through. Got the holes on there, so that section now is ready for stitching into that signature. So I just have to the into the tray. So I just have to do the other two now. So I'll put one there, there we go. The third one I'll have to do off camera because I've got to fold it all and sort it all. <laughs> So what makes it easy is the fact that Ian's used um, A4 paper for the central central piece, which I can just line up with my pricking guide. But it isn't 100% critical if you do get a little bit of wandridge, if that is such a word. Well, it is now anyway. There we go. Right, squeaky chair there. 
I think it's you. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me, honestly. Okay, so time to start stitching in the signatures into our tray. So I have my um, book binding thread, I've got my needles, I've got my um, beeswax, I've got the signatures that I need to do, so I'm all ready. So I'm going to measure out a double height piece of the cord. So I'm making sure I've got a little bit over and I'm just going to snip that off and I'm going to, even though this book binding thread is already pre-waxed linen, um, 25.3 if you're interested, that's the weight of book binding thread that I like to use. I don't really like to use anything thicker than that or thinner than that. The thinner stuff I think tends to snap, the thicker stuff is just a little bit unwieldy. And then I'm going to grab one of my um, needles, my book binding needles, it's got a large enough eye to get the thread through without having to be fiddly, whereas the points aren't too sharp um, so that they're not going to cause a problem. And I'm stitching. Okay, so my first signature, I'll lay that flat. So I'm going to come in from the back through the middle hole first. And then I'm going to push my needle through those pre-pricked holes that I've already done a few moments ago. Hopefully they won't have moved much. It's a little bit of a process this. Sometimes they do move a little bit. So I've got a second needle. That's it, just to help guide me through. So we'll do that again. Now that those papers have been pushed back into place, that should make this needle going right the way through so much easier if I can get the right angle of approach. There we go. Straight through the middle. So pull almost all the way through. Now what I like to do is just hold onto the end tail with my thumb. And then I'm going to go to the right hand hole, straight through. Because we're using different sizes of paper just make it a little bit more difficult but not too much more difficult there we go and then back through the hole in the tray pull to the right get a bit of tension and then go right the way back up to the top hole and then straight through the papers into the middle, pull through and then pull to the left, that way you're not going to rip your paper and then you can come back through that middle hole straight away. So that's my three hole pamphlet stitch but a lot of people like to do that in the reverse so that their knots are in the centre of the paper. I like to have mine on the outside mainly because we're going to stick this down so all the knots are going to be hidden. And then I'm just going to put one of the threads either side of the long one that runs from top to bottom. I'm going to pull side to side to get the tension. And then I'm just going to knot. And then as I'm knotting, I'm putting some tension holding the paper down with my, my fingers. But I'm also pulling and adding tension to the thread as I'm pulling it down or pulling the knot down. So I'm creating tension with the knot and with my fingers to make sure that it's not loose, if that makes sense. So down with your fingers and as you're pulling the thread, you're creating tension and tightening it up and then just trim off the excess.
And there's our first signature into the tray. Like I said, it's a junk journal, so it doesn't want to be completely uniform anyway. So what I like to do is just put one of those big clips just to hold that signature down in place. And then we repeat the process for the other two. And I'm sure there was a coffee being made somewhere. Oh, there was, sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to make a noise while you were filming. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. As soon as you can see me do the one signature, I'll fast forward through the other two while you're making me a coffee. How's that? And that is what you call... When it gets the pockets and the tags in it, it's going to look lovely. Yeah, that's what you call a drink journal. My one concern for some of these, it was just those yellow, um, little yellow one. They've so, all stitched in lovely there. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Apologize. <laughs> Obviously it's stitched in. Hang on. <laughs> Let's just go through. There, there. Oh, they're perfect. Yeah, perfect. Just those little ones in the middle. Lovely sewing machine. Yeah, that might need folding back in again will, anyway. It will be folding, So, yeah. you could even actually stick that to the front. Like that. Right, okay, so, now that I've done that, that tray and all the signatures are all stitched together. I just need to hand it over to Ian now. I'll fold the bits in and then we'll get it stuck into the, the, the outer. Exactly. Right, I can have my coffee now. So it's now a different day. It's actually Tuesday morning. Uh, so we did the rest of this on Sunday, but it's now Tuesday. Um, we filmed gluing in the spine or the, the tray into the book. Unfortunately, um, transferring the video over, uh, we managed to lose that piece of footage. Can't find it anywhere. Got everything else, but apart from that last piece of gluing it in. So unfortunately, I can't show you that. But like I just said, it was just straightforward gluing in with glossy accents, wasn't it? Yes, it is. And that, that was really it. So the tray with all the signatures are glued in to the covers. Glorious. Yeah, so the book is now a book, so all Ian has to do now is to populate it with his ephemera and his pockets, so that's what he's going to do now. There's lots of different pockets and lots of different ephemera. I've divided it all up into three, mm -hmm. one for each signature. Right, so just talk a little bit about this ephemera, Ian. What, what actually is it? Where's it come from? The ephemera is um, the vast majority of different designs. Um, now, all the journals I've designed so far, I've always printed extras just in case. Right. Um, and I've never needed the extras just in case. So the leftovers yeah. from previous Well, I don't journals. like the word leftovers. It makes it sound inferior. But yeah, they're superfluous stock. Right. Extras. Yeah. Overs. Extras. The overs, yeah. <laughs> Plus some pockets that you made to go in a journal a while ago. Yeah. So that was uh, one of those 4 before envelopes. But it's got some Tim Holtz paper oh, dolls. And it's got stitching on it. And yeah, so I made these to go in a journal a while ago, last year sometime. And again, I made too many. So I'll just give you a quick look through quickly of one, just one signature. They're all different. We've got a steampunk card. Well, I'll show you when I go through it, when I do my flick through. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I've got all my bits here. So I've worked out what can go in each... Each signature? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So you've got lots of what you've got pockets, you've got corner tuck spots. I've got journaling cards, tags, um, I've got tuck spot corners mm -hmm. and little tuck spot envelopes. Okay, so 
Um, they're going to be populated and you've got three pals, one for each signature. I have, yeah. Cool. So what we'll do then is we'll put two of those pals to one side. Yeah? Yeah. And then we'll show you populating just one signature because there's no point in watching you do all no, three. There isn't. No, and then we can have a flick through at the end. Absolutely. Okay, so let's just have a quick tidy up. Yeah. And then we'll get ready to start sticking in. Okay. You missed one. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you've selected your pile of ephemera. So uh -huh. Like I said, we're going to do one of the signatures. There's no point watching you do all three because no. it's pretty much the same thing anyway. So if you want to take over here and then just talk through what you're putting on, where you're putting on, okay. and why, okay. that'd be great. Okay, so I'm putting the pockets on first. I'm just going to do one signature, obviously, and, we'll do, and all the rest will follow. The pockets are corner pockets with tape across two sides. It's best, I didn't know this, Mike's just told me this, it's best to stick them on the side that's got lots of print on it because if I put them on there or on there, I'm blocking somewhere you can write. So on the pages that don't have um, any... Graphic. A, yeah, a lot of graphic, they're the pages that you're going to probably be doing most of the writing on. So if you put your tub spots and pockets on the pages that have lots of graphics on, then you're not taking up any valuable writing space. You can always paint over or add a paper block yeah. Um, yeah. to do your journaling, but if you take up valuable page real estate, if you like, yeah. then you're taking up Got valuable you. space. So Got that, that's the reasoning behind that. So this nice one here, I'm going to put a pocket on that corner, about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Mm -hmm. So that nice, lovely mm -hmm. corner pocket. So what I'm going to do, because I know it's supposed to be random, but I can't do it that randomly. <laughs> I'm actually going to put it on the opposite. There you go side as well. So that's the other side of the signature. Yeah, I'm just holding the pages open. Yes, thank you. Making okay. myself useful. On this one we've got a steam train on the corner. Yeah. See, it would be such a shame to cover that up. Yeah, it would. Okay, two pockets on that signature. So that's two corner tuck spots in. Yeah. So now I've got my little envelopes. Yeah, let me just keep my finger on that space between the signatures. Okay, dokey. So now I've got a lovely stitch pocket. Mm -hmm. So you've done. Top spot rather. So we've done that far. Yeah. I'm going about another three or four pages, I think. So onto this lovely Sears and Roebuck catalogue yeah. page. And I put that in the middle. Genuine Sears yeah, and Roebuck. Genuine Sears and Roebuck, isn't it? Absolutely. That's that. And if we go to the other side, Sears and Roebuck catalogue. Mm -hmm. This is a little small. Thin tuck pocket that Mike's made. Two by four envelope, two inches by four inches. Put that in the middle as well. Okay, and then we have another little pocket which we'll put wherever you feel you would like to put it. Uh, what have we got coming up? We've got some print coming up. We've got some music. Music, paper. I think. Pop it on the music page. So now we have, we have got, I've also got some little resin cabochons, beautifully vintage <laughs> cabochons. So I'm just going to pop one of these onto a page where I'm going to put it, I'll ask myself. Yeah, the attic. Yes. And there, that's not going to come off now. No. Yep. Lovely. And I've also got myself some little clips. Oh yeah, little metal clips. These are the Tim Holtz little, I don't know sure what they're called. Clips. Clips, fair enough. <laughs> the two pockets I've already put in. And they've got, are they the ones with the numbers on? Some are, yeah, and some aren't. Right, so they're the number clips. Yeah. There, are, there are plain clips and there are some number clips. Ah, there are both, I've got both in here. Yeah. So we'll go to the front and I'll just pop in a lovely tag. Mm-hmm. And we go to the back of that section, there we are, the other tag, and then we have our little pockets, the tall pockets you can put your tuck-ins in or whatever you want to put in them, but in these, these will fit like that, I've got three more cards, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these little, tip, these little clips from Tim, mm -hmm. I'm just going to clip them. The tops. I mean, you can put them where you like. Yeah, you? absolutely. Really. Well, that's the beauty, isn't it? Yes. Go through. I mean, 
There we are. Put one on there. I think the plain pages work much better with these on tucked on top. Well, yeah, because they can be moved then. Yeah. And then, obviously, the journaling cards have got spaces for writing in on the on the inside as well as the is the back as well. Yes, they have. Yeah, they're uh, they open up, which you'll see when I do my flick through. Mm -hmm. And the last one to go on there, we'll put it on there, I think. I've also got some other little bits and bats here, and these are <laughs> old railway. I think orders, letters of address. I think they're memos, internal memos from the railway dating to the 1930s or 19, from the 1930s. 1931. Yeah. I mean, these are lovely. So oh, these are going to go on to be tucked. So are they going to go in loose? They're going to go in with a little clip on. They'll either have a little clip on them. Yeah. These aren't reproductions, these are actual real. Yes, they are. Uh, so, this one's a London and North Eastern Railway one, Goods Department, Peterborough North, Ipswich Station, Ponder's End. That's yeah. a great Could name. Have another one, thing. please. Have Thank Ponder's you. End. I'll have Ponder's End. A bit of Ponderosa, but have Ponder's End. Braunston and Willoughby, That's near Hull. Some Rip Slough. Or slough. Slough. <laughs> but there's all sorts. Some great names, isn't there? I think that is that one that's got all the stuff in it now. The Peterborough one. So I think that's it, mate, for that. Yeah, there's some great colours on some of these. Now look at the, look at the colour on that. That's really aged, isn't it? I'm going to pop another one on there. So what date's that one from 1931? Again. So that's one. Of the signatures, I suspect the signature. There's so much in here. Mm. So that's one signature. I've done. I've got. The, I've put the all the bits and bats in there. Okay. I'm, I'm going to mutter through and do the other two, and then we'll do a show and tell. Do a flick through. Yeah. Excellent yeah. stuff. So we'll see you back in a moment. So we're all done. Time for a flick through. So this is the one I've been working on. This is the. And what do you call it when it's insects? Anematology? Entomology. Entomology, that's the one. I've cut myself as well. <laughs> you see, it's got the entomology. It's actually Tim Holt's fabric, isn't it, this one? It is. It's part of the is it eclectic or eclectic, whatever we call it. <laughs> it's, also, it's also got the decorative corners on. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Oh, I love lovely. it. It's great, isn't it? Never made one before I like these. Mm. I just love the fact that it's got a fabric cover. Yeah. It just feels very tactile. Special. Nice to hold. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's inside then? Okay, so we've got a, the inside same material as the cover, mm -hmm. and on the tray we have little um, resin shield. That one says true on it. Yeah. And we start. We've got the pages. There are three signatures in here, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you made it. I know. But I'm just saying we've got <laughs> three. So we have graph paper. We have. Is it a curl it a gazetteer, Mike? That's right. Yep. With a pocket in it and a. A nice tag to write on. Journaling tag. Another page with a steam train. Then that's that's what do we call that? It's a count like a count card. Yeah, it's isn't like it? a ledger sheet, yeah. isn't it? Nineteen fifties we reckon, don't we? Something like with that. With the round corners. Mm. And then a season rubber catalogue page, genuine one. Yep. With a steampunk card. And this has all been stitched. With one of my little pockets and some little paper dolls in there. Yep. Piece of graph paper, another season row book. I love this because it's the just feels nice. All it the does. different textures. They're they're all very tactile. And then we have a brown craft card. We have a journaling card on here, a floral one, and a, on one of those lovely those. railway uh, memos. Yep, they're lovely. They're really lightweight paper, but they uh, they feel so nice. Mm. With a, a little Tim, a little Timmy's little fasteners on. Yep. Music paper. This one's got a little pocket on it, and this one's got from an auctioneer's on it from a receipt. 1906. These are all real. They're not reproductions. Not reproductions. They're all the real McCoy. Genuine. Genuine. Yep. Ledger. Another ledger sheet. Parchment paper, which has been spritzed to give it a bit of foxing. 
another one of the railway timetables with a little Timmy clip on it. We have a, a map that's got a little cabochon on the bottom of a little clock, little watch. I like these. These are actually real land deeds and VAT, or VAT, tax. This one's from Rhodesia. Mm. But it's the beautiful penmanship and the little stamps. Has it got a date on. on it? It's 1946. Yeah. And then we have some more of the graft so paper. Just after, just after the end of the Second World War, then, yes, 1946. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have another page that's got a little cabochon on it. Second World War. Second World War. Did I say World. First World War? No, not the Great War. <laughs> this is another tag. There's nothing great about war. No, there isn't, but they called it the Great War because they didn't think there'd be a second one. No, that's true. If you ever watch a drama, ladies and gents, and they refer to the second, the first, the First World War as the First World War, <laughs> it's not accurate. It should be the Great War. They didn't think another one would happen. <clears throat> So then we've got some more graph paper. This is the other side of the uh, land deed that we opened up that way. Mm -hmm. Then we have another one of those railway telegrams. On a map. Another clip here with a journal in Tiger Steampunk. One looking forward to the past. It's one of your Vern industries. It is. It? Then the other, other side. We're going back round now through the second side. So we have the that ledger paper. Ledger paper. The music paper. Craft paper. Lovely craft paper. Wrinkly. And then we have one that opens out there, Inland Revenue. That one's from 1908. Yeah, and this one's Oxford. Oxford? Yes. So that falls in there. I think that falls in there. No, I think you were at right the first and time. That falls in there. That's it there, yeah. Yep. We have a little tuck spot here for you to put stuff in on another Sears and Row book. Absolutely. Some more lovely graph paper to write on. More Sears and Row, but I love these. Mm. I love the illustrations on yeah. those. So I think we've got the general gist of what the pages are. Well, this is just one. One, one, one signature. Yeah, so then, more of the same yeah. in each of the signatures yes. as well. So, you've so. Got, so that's just one signature and you've got... Three. three signatures with all different cards in, you get, spots. Yes, yeah, so you get the general gist of what's yes. in the rest of them. Yes. So, that's that journal. That's the, anim what do you call it, entomology? Entomology. Entomology one. But I've also made three more. I've made four in total. Well, you've got the bits to make. Well, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've got the covers there, all the other stuff's downstairs. Yes, so do you want to show them the other three colours? So covers? all the other ones will have the same, or very similar sort of things in. Obviously, they're all one-offs of the... the um, land deeds but everyone has a similar sort of thing in yes so that's the entomology so then you have a beautiful birdie one that's not tim holtz is it no i don't think so no don't think it, is. it looks like it could be but i'm not uh, sure isn't that one of the motor ones it's a motor one yeah and that will have the same sort of tray in it with all the pages in so that's the birdie one the blue bird Lovely. With a lovely decorative corners. Mm -hmm. And then you have your vintage scripty one. The vintage script one's lovely. Yeah, because that's got like compasses and clocks and feathers and birds yes. and all kind of butterflies on the inside. Uh, and that's that one. Got lovely writing. So it's all very textural. Yeah, it Text, is. Text, textural. Oh, on very good, yes. Yeah, yeah. And my personal favourite one. This is a bit wowie for me. And but then this is the another Tim Holtzy paper one. The Rose Garden, I'm calling yes. in this one. As you can see, it's finished to the same standard inside. The tray will sit in there with all the pages in it. Yep. So we have one, two, and three. So, and all four of these will be on your website. They will. Now. They so we'll put your website address on the screen here, but also there'll be a clickable link in the description area below for anybody who wants to purchase one of these fantastic junk journals. Obviously these are one-offs yes. because of the material. Mm -hmm. Can't get the same material again so if you're interested please hurry across and make your purchase. First come first serve. That's it. Uh, unique items never to repeat it again. That's true. Until we find some more fabric that we like. different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for this video. Um, your very first junk journals. I've re I hate the word junk journal. That's what they call them. I know, but they're so beautiful. I know, but it's a junk journal. A beautifully junk journal. Yes, a beautiful okay. junk journal. Yeah. 
So I hope you've enjoyed watching this creation and flick through of Ian's first junk journals. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from us for this Steampunk Tuesday. It is. We'll be back again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels, because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.